John McConnell, welcome to part three of our series. Today we're going to talk about when you're preparing your home, when you're ready to sell, should you be fixing up your home? Should you be decluttering? Should you be staging? Well, first of all, the, uh, to some degree, the answers are self-explanatory. If you can, staging is awesome. It's part Decluttering is part of staging. Um, you want to make your home seem open, big, bright, wonderful. Um, I, I know from buying a few homes myself in my life with my wife and, and, and also buying some homes that we flipped and going to properties with family members, going to properties as an agent. Uh, for me, I think the drive up, the, the what your front looks like and that walk through the door, that's where it's all, it, people just totally discount a home sometimes and then you're gonna have to compete on price if that's not like a charming little setup, if they don't say, hey, this is for me, whatever the price range. Obviously, I live in Poway. I don't expect my home to have a Rancho Santa Fe, La Jolla Shores type. Well, Rancho Santa Fe is one thing. You wouldn't want a La Jolla Shores type house in Rancho Santa Fe walking up and expect the top dollar in the neighborhood. So it's all neighborhood and context and money dependent. But if you're trying to get top dollar, you, sh you want to look better than your neighbors. And that first, there's like that gestalt feeling when you walk in a house. Is this the place for me? And it's definitely shaped by that walk up. I cannot tell you how often I, when I was showing lots of buyers properties, how often they could just say, no, I don't like the house. And they did it once the door was open. And I never, I was like, okay, we're gone. I'm not going to try to talk about a house they don't love. Um, now, um, the next thing is the kitchen. Um, my wife and I have an ongoing issue with the house that we're in. The kitchen's not big enough for her because she cooks five, six times a day. Well, four to five days a week. And uh, we, we've been looking for other homes. Um, you know, we've tried to update things, not enough. But like at some point, do we want to spend $20,000, $30,000 updating the kitchen and another thirty to do the cabinets? Or do we just want to get a better house? So, so your kitchen is going to influence a certain segment of the market. Declutter it. Make it look spacious. Take all those appliances away. Because your buyers might not use those appliances. Maybe leave a coffee maker, a cool coffee maker out. To make it look like maybe with some cups ready. I mean, tell the story of a wonderful, relaxed kitchen where things can get made if they want, where people can talk. Um, now, as I said before, declutter the rest of the house. Um, depersonalize it. I don't know. Um, yeah, not every single picture of your family, but a few families, a few pictures need to make it look like people live there. You know, if you can show pictures of your kids being happy in front of the schools and you're in a family neighborhood, which, by the way, I know realtors don't like to talk about family neighborhoods. I do. I'm an attorney. I cannot believe that the government is telling me if someone's buying a home that it like my dad didn't want to live in a family neighborhood when he retired. He didn't want to see people going off to work. He actually told me that. Whereas other people, you know, uh, you know, one of the tricks I heard, oh, well, tell them to look in the garages and see all the sporting equipment and know if it's a family neighborhood. No, tell them it's a family neighborhood. You know, I'll take the lawsuit if the government wants to shut me down. I'm not trying to help discriminate against people. I'm trying to help people be happy when they're buying a home. Um, so make your realtor tell you. If you don't have a realtor has the guts to tell you the truth, drop that realtor. If that realtor has a problem, have them call me. I'll tell them that, you know, I'm not going to go to court for them, but I'll defend them against the government if we're working together. If I've referred your property to that realtor, we're going to have that realtor tell you the truth. If they're in California, tell them I will do letters and I will shut down the government unless they decide to sue, right? <laughs> you know, but I want you to get that information. I, realtors shouldn't be afraid. They're working for the big companies and becoming still not say family neighborhoods. Stop it. Sorry for the rant. That's a, I, I digress. So um, now, uh, whew, where were we? We were talking about uh, fixing up your property. So now, um, repairs. I've never met a non-almost new house that didn't, maybe you just put in paint and carpet so it looks good, but I've never met a house that couldn't look better with fresh paint and good carpets. Now, your carpets may be good already, and so is your paint, in which case, you're good. But if it's a mess, no matter what level, um, paint and carpets will probably get you the money back because it looks more moving ready. There may be other problems with the house, and people know they have to fix them over time. But with paint carpets and, a whole, and warranties on the appliances, a home warranty on the appliances, People are going to look good for that level. They may know they're buying a fixer-upper, but can they move in? Like if people evaluate, i got to spend three months fixing up the property, you're selling to a whole different clientele. If you're selling to investors and people like that, make it look like you care about the house, but maybe you don't do paint and carpet. The other time 
but even with paint and carpet, but any other repairs you have to put in this context, will they, will, will I get my money back out of them? Will they let me sell my house for that much more money? Now, I'm going to tell you the thing that I think is discussed the least is, yes, you spend money, like you see people spend, well, should you spend $50,000 on, on this? Well, you might not get $50,000 back out. But some repairs might, like a new bedroom might, if you add a bedroom, if you change it up, paint it, put it in a closet, get it near a bathroom, and hey, I put a bedroom in the property, you might get every dime you put into the bedroom and then more, especially in a family neighborhood. But the issue is, will it get you to that next level property or they're already the lower end of those neighborhoods? Let's say it's the neighborhood next door. Let's say it's the places with the good schools. Let's say it's homes already for sale in your neighborhood and it's not just one. Like, you know, they're always going to be there because that that 500 square foot home sells for more than my property and that's where these come start coming in. So you have to put it in market context. Not only is the repair worth it, but is it going to make money for you? I mean, put it in that market context, which is why we're going to discuss pricing in the next video and market context. Pricing to sell, pricing to sell for top dollar, market context. We're going to discuss that in the very next video, how you can do it with or without a realtor. So in short, uh, my name is John McConnell, by the way. I'm a real estate attorney and a broker. My broker has sold over 200 homes. I've referred out listings and buyers all over the country uh, through myself personally and with my brokerage. I've had realtors that like to specialize in that when we were doing it. Um, so um, where do you find out more? Winnerscheck.com forward slash videos. Winnerscheck.com forward slash videos. Um, John McConnell, and maybe the link, maybe you'll see a link if you're seeing it on YouTube. John McConnell, winnerscheck.com forward slash videos. Um, we will be discussing in the very next video, pricing your home for top dollar, pricing your home to sell, and um, market context. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.